Yes, if I add my congratulations to all of those reports I've seen today, they were fantastic. Um, not least, because it's quite nerve-wracking, actually standing up here in front of everyone. So you've been really brave, you've done really well. Right now, my brain's sort of telling my body that I've got an 800% chance of death, which I know is not true, but it still makes me a bit nervous. Um, so I'm here to introduce Vertigo. Oh, well, I need to click that. No, it should click on. Yeah. There we go. There we go. We're good. So, investigating and rotating. My wife came up with the um, the title. It's not an acronym for anything. I've tried to give it a backronym, but it didn't really work. I got to very easy, reliable tracker, but then I sort of got lost on the IGO. Um, it's a new project. It's pretty exciting, and I would be. I felt a little bit like Kevin Keegan in 1996. I'd be absolutely love it if some of the groups that I've seen today were to take on a project on this. It would be great. So what's Vertigo? It's um, essentially um, a high fidelity position and orientation data logger. So it takes GPS data at 10 hertz and it takes um, IMU data at 200 hertz. But I think it's a unique selling point is that it, it gives these rotations in a world frame of reference. So most of the tools that you might have that will give orientation and position will give those in the frame of reference of the uh, device or the frame of reference of the measuring unit. Whereas Vertigo is slightly different because it will give you its orientation based upon north, east and down. So the convention is our x, y, z coordinates are the north direction, the east direction and the down direction. Um, which is pretty complicated. So it's had me in my head in all sorts of a spin, which I think is partially what the idea of the title of the project is Vertigo. You're moving around in all dimensions and you're going to find yourself sort of struggling to understand what's going on. So I thought maybe in today's explanation, if I gave you a little uh, outline of what this means and what the data will give you, that will be a help. And then at the end, maybe you can come up with some ideas of what we might use it for. So actually, if I, if I go back, here was my calibration experiment. So I, I put Vertigo, which looks a little bit like this. I mean, I sort, of, sort of looks like that. It has a GPS unit, so it fits on the record player there. I think they've had a bit of a renaissance, actually, record players. So they've <laughs> gone out of fashion, but now maybe they're back in. So my experiment was, I put it on the uh, record player, face like this, and then like this, and then like this, to see what results I would get out. And here we go. So. This is the first graph with uh, vertigo upright, so it's facing vertical. And this is the type of data that you would get out of normal data loggers that give position. You can see that you've got minus one uh, units are g, so it's got minus one acceleration. Uh, I think that's in the y direction, so that means the board's frame of reference vertically down. Um, but you have this constant acceleration here in the z direction, which would be, when it's rotated upwards, which would be like this. And that's our constant centripetal acceleration whilst it's on the record player. The record player, although it's quite old and it's a bit broken, it still rotates at a sort of fairly constant rate. And here's the bit that sets vertigo apart from other data levels. It's giving you your acceleration in the world frame of reference. So this was um, a record player, it was flat, it was rotating like this, meaning anyone that studied physics at A level, they've done some simple line of motion, they'll notice straight away we're going from a rotating frame that's going circular to these two phase, uh, 90 degree out of phase sinusoidal waves telling you we're accelerating up and down in the north direction like this, and we're accelerating east and west like this. And you'll notice that we've got one gravity facing down, which is good. Right? One we'll you down. So then my next experiment, I, uh, I placed it on its side. What do we expect to see? Well, hopefully you'll notice that the bottom graph is very similar. That because it's given in a world frame, the whole idea is it doesn't matter how we mount or uh, vertigo onto our, the thing we're measuring. That's irrelevant because it's measuring our accelerations in the world frame. So this part's very different. You've got acceleration now. Oh, and the acceleration's in the Z direction. So that's probably quite good. And you have a constant acceleration in Y, which is totally different. But again, you get the same rotations uh, in the world frame. Um, so what we use it for? Well, the first thing we did, my, my actual whole reason for doing this originally was to try and infuse students to get into uh, physics by taking them to Thor Park. Um, so this is stealth. That's the Orion stealth. And this is some data that I managed to peel off there, uh, stealth. There is an absolute massive array that you could look into. 
Anything that moves, anything that rotates, and any information that you could possibly get from there is stored somewhere in one of these files. And so this is just a very brief selection of the data that I can get. This was uh, Stealth's velocity. This was its yaw as it goes around Stealth, looking from above in the northeast position. These were its velocities, accelerations, and displacement. I think that's magnitude, not in a particular direction. And then here, this is the magnitude of uh, acceleration. And this was wonderful. So showing my students at school, I was able to say, where's the maximum acceleration on stealth? And they all said, oh, it's right at the beginning when the, when the uh, ride first starts. But that's not the case. Your linear acceleration might be really high there. But of course, your maximum acceleration is when you're going around these corners. And that was shown a bit more when we looked at Colossus. So Colossus is a ride where you do many, many, many loop -the loops like this. And you can see from this data that Stealth has these two peaks in uh, uh, acceleration, whereas Colossus, because you're constantly going on a loop, has many, many different uh, high G moments. So if you're after vertical acce linear acceleration, it's Stealth for you. If you just want to have experience high G, Colossus is the one. So what can we use it for? Um, Wingsuit flying. There's wingsuit flying. Um, unfortunately, has quite a high mortality rate. Not quite <laughs> as high as flying to Mars, but it's it's almost similar. So the, they need to know their angle of attack, which is the angle between their flight and their pitch. And that's very difficult to measure if you are three miles up with no frame of reference. Whereas the whole idea is Vertigo gives you that because it's in the world frame. So we can find the angle of attack. And that guy, absolutely no doubt, says we'll be able to publish a paper if you can get that information for it. Uh, Rowing. Oxford and Cambridge, uh, they're famous for their rowing battles, but they're also famous in their, their colleges will row against one another. And if we could give any piece of advantage to one college, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. So if we could say to them, oh, your boat is rowing too much, your boat is pitching too much, or did you realise that this person's oar is not making the catch at 90 degrees? This could be added information. Uh, crash test dummies. I was thinking about other ideas. Um, speaking to some of the boys in one of the groups earlier, they said, put it on a dog. Great idea. Uh, see how fast the dog can turn, see how fast the dog can accelerate. That would be wonderful. And I doubt anyone's done that before. So how can you get involved? Uh, there are only seven left. We made 12. Uh, one to the wing suit guy, so assuming he comes back, um, <laughs> we might go back up to eight. He's a lovely character, by the way. Um, read the blog. Sign up to wire, uh, Iris. Ask Steve Greenwood, um, or look on the hashtags. These two will give you some information of what you might be able to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.